salute, and thank you, nerd soul. Yeah, that's right. Lay ill kid at one youngster holding down, bringing that street geek and nerd soul. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Let's go because it's time to talk about rings of power. We have passed the halfway point. We are headed towards the finale. It's clear to see that in this episode, but we don't have Solar Gray this episode. We will have a Solar Gray later this week, but we are joined with Jay Shearer, Story Geeks, How a Story Was Worth, all that good stuff. What's up? Oh, dude, it's good to be here. Um, I forgot that I was with you guys podcasting about um, Rings of Power <laughs> last season. So when you hit me up, I was like, oh, that's right. Yeah, I was like, let's do it. That sounds awesome. Um, I think it's I'm a, definitely a downgrade from Solar because Solar knows all the lore, and I know none of the lore. I, I just literally text my brother um, every single time I'm watching a Rings of Power episode. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Why is this happening? <laughs> and then he has to explain it all to me. But uh, hey, look, I'm here to talk about the story and it, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot more this season. So that's good. Oh, OK. So with that said, I'll, uh, I want to throw it to you real quick. Since you've seen this season, how are you feeling about this season in general? Because you weren't with us when we first came back, when we saw the first three episodes or four episodes or whatever. So how are you feeling about season two? How, what's the vibe you get? So um, I like it a lot more um specifically uh, i think that episode one was a great episode episode two and three were kind of okay episodes for me episode four was phenomenal and then episode five was um was decent as well um so, so not a bad episode yet i think for me the biggest thing about this season is that some of the storylines that i didn't like as much last season are now getting results because the, the conflict mm -hmm. is better the the emotions in the scenes make more sense to me so like for example when this season started i would have told you you know what i'm not really excited about anything that's going on with the dwarves um and i would have told you that oh, i'm not really too excited about what's going on with the stranger like those two storylines aren't really working all that well the drama yeah. that's involved in them the conflict is just not that interesting to me and then this season both of those have been solved like I started out the first couple episodes, I was like, ah, the dwarf storyline I'm not sure about. But after last night's episode, I'm like, the dwarf storyline's pretty good now. Like, so, yeah, so I think it's it's an improvement all around. Okay, okay. I, I'd say I'm sort of in a similar space where I remember seeing the trailer and I was like, okay, okay, here we go. We got something good. And this seems to be more focused and driven and action-packed than the first season. So... I was excited about where we could go. Then when I saw the first three episodes, I had the feeling of, okay, we had to eat our veggies. Now we're <laughs> now we're getting to some cake. Now, we're, now <laughs> with that said, I understand we have to have our veggies. We have to learn the story. We have to lay the groundwork because we're going way, way back. Like we're going back before The Hobbit as well. We're going super far back. But once again, to my writers, directors, showrunners, whatever, when you give us veggies, they don't have to be boiled down to like mush. You can <laughs> roast your veggies, you can grill your veggies, you can fire roast them. There's there, there's ways you can make veggies, you know, enticing. So I'll say that, but I've enjoyed it. I've, just, I've enjoyed it all the way through. I think this is a much better season, but I also think it's a much better season because we kind of got all of our, you know, our groundwork out of the way. Mm -hmm. So you know i'm not the biggest fan of season one i felt like we were always getting close to something good but now i believe that we're really getting that payoff you know seriously paying off almost every episode with something exciting happening so um i'll throw it to you uh what's uh what do you want to talk about on this episode first Ooh, good question um i think i think i want to talk about like some of the character arcs and how they've improved and some of, and why, and like when I say that the conflict is better, like maybe just describing that a little bit more mm -hmm. because, so for example, like last season ended and we finally got to realize that Galadriel's arc was that she was overconfident. Cause there was a lot of people complaining about Galadriel in season one. They're like, oh, like, you know, she's another Mary Sue. She can do all this stuff, whatever. No, that was all no, false. <laughs> also, also, if she's a Mary Sue, this is my argument. Now, don't get me wrong. Mary Sue's do exist, but there's a lot of tropes that exist for essentially writer's expedience. Yes. But 
elves themselves are the Mary Sue. Oh, yes. Elves in totally. general are just super, <laughs> super nice at everything. Oh, y'all are the best builders. Y'all are the best designers. Y'all are the best fighters. Y'all are the best everything. Y'all got the yeah. best hair, the best, the coolest, <laughs> coolest rings and the best outfits. Like every, so everything is the best about them. And then they're arrogant about it too. So that's, it's, it's kind of how elves are. Yes. You know, I mean, nobody complained about Legolas being mad sweet and essentially defying gravity yeah. multiple times. <laughs> That's so true. So <laughs> it's like, man, this dude is like, I don't care about physics. I'm Legolas. So, <laughs> so th it's like, come on, man. But I mean, Mary Sue, the Mary Sue does exist, but Galadriel, I wouldn't. She's an elf in yes. Lord of the Rings. I don't. Nah, this is just how elves do. Well, and her specific overconfidence was at the end, by the end of season one, her specific overconfidence was, was shown to be false. In other words, so, so like, for example, a lot of times people like to complain that somebody's a Mary Sue and it's like, well, let them finish the arc, dude. Like you, yeah. you can't complain about somebody being a Mary Sue when that person just needs to learn that they were overconfident in something like, um, and she, she learns that very clearly. So her, the source of conflict for her is actually really interesting to me in season two because in season two here she is not agreeing with a, what a lot of people are suggesting is done um and now she has to work uh with elrond um except that elrond is now her her boss basically right so yeah. i think um i think that's a really good and interesting place to put her it takes away that that like that overconfidence that she had in season one, that's completely gone. She's defiant still, that's fine, but um, she's not as overconfident as she was. And I think it gives Elrond a much more interesting character arc because the Elrond's character arc in season one was like, can you befriend dwarves? It's like, okay, I guess that's interesting, but like for one episode, we don't need it's, to see that. For it's like it's almost like, no, I, I can befriend dwarves. dwarves yeah. They yeah. like me. Yeah, true. You, elves in general, they don't like us, but there's a reason because let's be honest, guys, we act like we we act like we're the best in the world. And exactly. maybe we are, but still. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so I think this this season that conflict um uh, is much more interesting because now he's actually against Galadriel. Um they have different differing opinions. And the conflict that we're encountering, like, okay, so at the at the core of anything Tolkien-esque is this idea and this concept that everybody is on a quest for something, right? Mm -hmm. And so now we have everybody on a quest, right? Like Elrond and Gladriel are on a quest. We've got the stranger and, and his two um, halfling partners. They're on a quest. Um, it, it feels now like instead of, the only people who aren't on a quest yet are really the dwarves because they're still figuring some of their stuff out. Um, but they, a lot of these other they're gonna people, figure it out fast too. Yeah, yeah, they gotta figure it out real fast. Well, and 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 even Adar, um, the orc leader, he even he's on a quest. Um, even Sauron is on a quest. Like they're all on quests, and that makes things far more interesting. And it also puts us in a place where Lord of the Rings is supposed to be. So, from my standpoint, so for example. When you're on a quest, you can encounter a lot of things that are strange. When we encounter the Ents, it's a good episode. That's cool. That's the yeah. way that the conflict is done was dope. When they encounter the Barrow Whites, that was amazing. Oh, I'm like, yes. this is Lord of the Definitely. Rings. We're, we're here. That's probably my favorite scene of all of Rings of Power um, so far. So to me, all of those things are now back on track for what I, my expectations of Tolkien-esque storytelling are. So that's why I think this season is better than last season. Definitely. And I like the the shifting of power balances that we're getting. There, There is so much. Okay, for, for one, I guess I will talk about Numenor for a second. Mm. So in Numenor, of course, last episode, we see Muriel. She, I guess, it doesn't really say that she's not the queen but she sort of lost that title due to public perception it doesn't seem like the line has been drawn but because she yeah. hasn't moved out of the castle but the eagle showed it, up and everybody thought that the other dude was yeah for some uh, uh, yeah. Or, <laughs> right 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 yeah, right. Fair, fair yeah. so yeah so she's 
kind of out or on her way out and Therizan is coming in and you see this power struggle or or changing of the hands of power because it seems like Therizan's son and Ellen Dill's Ellen Dill's daughter and that girl I, I ain't gonna I know she's supposed to be his daughter but she looked like she's 40 but anyway <laughs> <laughs> so they're supposed to be the new ones in power and the whole episode for me was tense because it seems like Therizan's people have the army but Muriel's Muriel has the navy and I'm like uh this thing could hop off anyway you know because it seems that the military have clearly side with Farazan and whatever yeah. he wants to do but the navy seems well honestly the navy seems loyal to Ellendale and Ellendale is loyal to Muriel and also I did see that little scene when she was putting his hand her hand on his chest. She did it two times. I was like, oh snap. You know what I mean? She up there. I mean, you look, I mean, look, her husband's gone. She's a widow. Yeah. Or a widower? Widow. I, one of them. But anyway, yeah. she ain't got nobody. You know what I'm saying? Right. She young, he young, you know, she put that hand on his chest. He, he held it for a second, but it was like, nah, you know, we can't, we ain't got time for that. You know, so I, I did see that, but there were there were moments that were tense for me because I was imagining what it would be like in any society, not you know, not even our society in the U.S. You know, in Canada, you know, Russia, you know, uh, no Iran, anywhere where the military and the navy then decided they're going to take sides and they're not on the same. Like mm. that would be a very that'd be wild situation. Yeah, and we see it come to a head at the shrine. And I, I was blown away when when the dude broke the the uh, the uh, the I guess the little the statuette or whatever, mm. and I can't remember what they named it. But when he broke that, I was like, "Oh my god!" And the thing is, I don't even <laughs> serve that god. It's a made up god for the show, but still, <laughs> it's I know the respect we should have for religious items. Yeah. Like, okay. Even um even in our you know in real life unless yeah, technically yeah. we're in the matrix and it's not real but you know whatever so <laughs> so in in Islam they don't play about the Prophet Muhammad I would right. never do something and I'm not I'm not Islamic I'm not a Muslim but I still know I would not cross that that line because I know that they don't play that you know what I'm saying right, right. so like I, when he when he broke that I was like oh my god. <laughs> like I said that out loud, I was like, "Oh, it's, it's over," and and the fight in the shrine was crazy. But you know, once again, be very wary of those that they want to get rid of the shrine. They want to get rid of this. They want to. I was like, "Man, mm. Luminor is getting is going to be turned upside down." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude, I can't stand that kid either. Like, I guess yeah. I guess it's uh, Farazan is Farazan's uh, kid. Or yeah, Farazan's son. Yeah, that dude. He they, they made him to be annoying, man. Yeah, like his whole character. He was sniveling in the first season too. Yeah, dude. Uh, that guy. Is, but that, but that makes it for a good character, right? Like true, because he's uh, someone I, we love to hate. But every time he comes on screen, we're like, oh my god, he was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and of course, him. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I guess every show needs that person that when they show up, you're like, uh, I can't wait till you're dead. <laughs> and I hope I hope you have a good death scene. Like we really. That we really get to soak up your your death. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially especially after what he did in this last episode. Yeah. Like, come on, dude. Right in front of the other guy. Like, what were you thinking, bro? Like, this, you, you basically went from, hey, look, let's wind things down a little bit to, oh, let's ramp them up to 100. I mean, that was, that was insane. So, obviously, I'm referring to him putting yeah, a sword uh, Kelly, to the And I cannot yeah. remember. Uh uh the friend of Ellen Dill's son who is I can't yeah. remember his name right now. Someone in the comments will let us know. Basically Isildur's buddy. Yeah, right? Isildur's yeah. yeah, Isildur's yeah. friend. Yeah, his, so yeah. Got the, all like he, the curly curly mop of hair. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> curly, you know, uh, illustrious hair man. Yes, exactly. But when exactly. he killed him, I'm like, okay, first we're already fighting in the temple, which we should not be doing. And now you've spilled blood in the temple. 
And then when he, another time when I said, "Oh my God," is when he washed the sword off in the water. That's supposed. That's like special water. You can't. Mm. I mean, that would be. That would be like I guess the equivalent of holy water. You just can't do that. Like I was like the disrespect. Yeah, is dude. high. Yeah, with this person. So, I mean, that makes for a good episode, but it also makes for like I hate this guy. Exactly. But the exactly. funny thing is, as I was watching the scene, when um. Uh, when uh, when Ellen Dill told him, you know, no, don't kill him, stop. And I remember saying out loud, basically talking to Ellen Dill, we can't let him live. Mm. I've broken his arm, held him at knife point. Where, where do I go? I can't sleep now. I can't sleep in the same town this man is in. Oh, that's Not point. when he has control of the of the military. He's mm -hmm. got to go. Yeah. Like once once we've sort of once we've made this step we've sort of gotta finish it yeah i will say i didn't believe for a second that 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 kid farazan's kid could hold that other dude underwater for that long i'm like yeah what like what strength serum did this guy take before he did this Thank there's no you. chance he's when they started this. fighting i was like this is a trained soldier and <laughs> exactly. you're you're just a guy that doesn't exactly. even like no basic hand-to-hand -hand combat so because stabbing him in the back it makes sense for his character yes. right it's like yeah like he's sniveling he would do that for sure but when he was holding them underwater i'm like no way this lasts like what is going on <laughs> <laughs> like no way at all uh i guess um another thing i wanted to talk about is the the many scenes that we get from uh keller brimbor and quote anatar's perspective um because we spent a lot of time at the forge and we see a little bit of i guess keller brimbor's awakening i guess you mm. could say because he says something you know about sauron's mind games like how you know you make people think that their thoughts are their own kind of thing mm. and I was finally thinking, yes, like you're catching on. But of course, these next ring, nine rings definitely get made. We know that. So <laughs> right. it's, it's, that's the part of a prequel that kind of doesn't work because we're like, oh, well, I mean, he's realizing, but he's still going to make it. Well, actually, now we know sort of uh, Anatar could have them made himself because mm -hmm. he did make that ring. The one that I believe that's the same ring that Frodo ends up getting. Because the girl went invisible. Oh, you know what? That's really interesting that you say that. Because, but I could be wrong. Well, that makes more sense. Okay, okay. So this is actually so when I mentioned I have to text my brother about stuff. Um, here, this is one of the things I was confused about because. Okay, so uh, you know, for those who weren't who didn't listen to me last season or haven't listened to this season, um, I have not read the Cimmerillion or anything. I've, yeah, I've, I've read, read the Hobbit. Neither I've of us read... have read any of this stuff. So if y'all yeah. know, please feel free to let us know in the comments. Like, oh no, it went like this, or this person doesn't like that. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. So the thing that I always have a hard time with is I don't understand when they're breaking lore or when they're living into the lore that already exists. Right. Mm -hmm. So here's okay. just a few questions that I had to ask my brother because I'm like. I don't understand what's going on. Um, one of those things was I was like, I'm not clear on from the show. I'm not clear on is is the evil that is causing problems in Middle Earth is that evil because Sauron is rising again and like Sauron's causing that evil, or is this just like things happening in Middle Earth? Because the show makes it seem like Sauron is causing all of those things. So let me give you a few examples. Like, gotcha. why does, why is the, like, it's so, okay. So in season one, the tree fa failing from the elves, the, the, all the leaves are falling off a tree and the elves are like, ah, oh, like we're dying in the Middle Earth or whatever. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so that seems to me to be just a general, like it's time for the elves to be gone. Like that's what it felt like to me, right? Yeah, but then when the dwarves started losing their light and everything started collapsing in on them, and they started having the earthquakes or whatever, I'm like, well, wait a minute, is this is this actually the evil of Sauron that's like now spreading, or is this just the natural occurrence of like what's going on in Middle Earth, and it's turning into the Age of Men or whatever? Because we know that that's a thing, right? We've been told that from watching Lord of the Rings. Yeah, 
And I don't know that the show gives you enough information to know that stuff. Because like, I have to text my brother and I, and I go, <laughs> so is this like Sauron doing this stuff? Or is like, and he, he was telling me that like not te technically, Tolkien never said that was like evil spreading because of Sauron. That was just like the natural occurrence of like time moving on, right? Um, and so that makes more sense to me, but also it, it like, it's hard to know that that's going on. <laughs> so yeah, because it seems like it is the the I guess what you would consider like the continual uh, corruption of yes. Sauron. Yes, like the yes. slow, continued corruption of Sauron. Of Sauron, exactly. And um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Zoro uh, Forty Five, who brought in a whole bunch of info on us on on our last episode. But let us know, Zoro, if 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 it's sort of like the continued corruption or Tolkien, because we I know what's in the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and this show that I haven't forgot. You know, because I still have to rewatch the hobbit and lord of the rings like once i don't know every other year or whatever to just remember like oh <laughs> those finer details like i remember oh yeah this person won that person lost this person died but i don't remember like other things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it to me it seems like sauron has a small corruptive hand that starts to kind of devour everything else kind of like if you know like vines start growing so like mm. essentially he he drops a seed for evil vine here evil vine there evil vine there so as the vines grow he doesn't really know what's happening to those vines but he knows it's just chaos it's mm. just evil chaos is happening and ha 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 because i wanted it to happen kind of thing yeah so, that's what i think because even here i don't when we have the rings from the forge you know we we give them to during the third um and we have the rings for the forge they're starting to speak of course like they were speaking to um uh, galadriel mm -hmm. and i was wondering like okay is this a situation where this is part of the ring replaying or playing insecurities of your own or mm. is this sauron bonding the, you know the the spirits of the evil or the demons or a demon mm. to this ring and then putting it on your finger to then poison your mind kind of thing yeah um, that's if, a good if question. i'm explaining that right because yeah. of course we don't super know and then of course when the rings start having problems and during the fourth comes back uh what is it? Uh, Sauron says that, oh, you know, deceit was brought into this process. Right. And it's because you lied when we made these rings. The other rings were commissioned, but these rings were made under deceit. And I was thinking, you know what? It's just like the devil mm. to essentially lead you to your own demise. But since he didn't take that last step or technically he didn't take any of the steps for you then he sits back like oh well i mean you you made these under deceit <laughs> right you and did said, well yes i did i did i do have to own that i made these you know in a deceitful way but you also made it seem like it was of paramount importance that these things were made and that you know we can't allow anyone to stop us because it is mm. so important that these rings be made yeah so it, it's kind of it's kind of like the devil will be like well look at the hand you played mm. and then also forget the fact that he stacked the deck against you right so it so i just thought that was interesting in that point the way their relationship is going back and forth now and how sauron always wants to pull someone to the side and talk to them you know i i thought that was interesting the way it was their, their back and forth relationship is going yeah yeah, two things about that are interesting. By the way, does my mic sound okay? I switched my mic yeah, over. Yeah. I realized it was a different... I was talking through my uh, headphone mic, and now I'm talking through a different mic. Um, cool, cool. So uh, two things are really interesting about that. One is really interesting about that is that Sauron is probably one of the most interesting characters uh, that exists because he worked for Morgoth, and Morgoth was like 
a super powered being and mm -hmm. Sauron sort of like learned what he needed to learn from Morgoth to be more of like a lesser powered being but he gets his way with people by I think your comparison to like the devil is actually really really good because he gets his way by lying to people right like the the girl mistakenly tries on the ring and then Sauron is the first one to go over to her and everyone else is like, "Well, what did you do? Like we may we want we may get her in trouble because she's doing stuff she shouldn't be doing and she's freaking out." And Sauron's the one that's like, "Hey, don't worry about it. Like everything's good to go. You're you're you didn't do anything wrong. Like this is just a part of like when you're creating things, it creates problems and don't worry about it. Like we're going to overcome this together." And so there's this there's this element of Sauron that's like he lies and his lies are effective, you know? They seep into a person. He almost has like the power of like, if, you're, if we're picking people from Lord of the Rings, he almost has the power of um, the orc, like the witch king, but also has the power of, of uh, worm tongue. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like wow. he's got both. <laughs> um, yeah, especially when he said, he was like, when your hair caught the light, you were as beautiful as Galadriel or something. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. What is he doing? Yeah, hey, I don't look. know if I'd agree with that, but I mean, go ahead. I mean, Sar Sauron's got to get some too, I guess. What, what's? <laughs> well, I think I think it's one of those things where, in trying to make her feel good and get her on your side, because you know that she'll end up talking to other people, you have to make her like you. And I yep. mean, of yep. course, she's probably already physically attracted to him. He's walking around there; they know he's some kind of powerful guy. Yep. So you know, he oh oh he likes me kind of thing. Yes, totally. So I think that that makes it really interesting, his character even more interesting. The other thing that I think is really fascinating, but I also had to have, you know, I had to text my brother questions about. Um, I didn't really realize like totally how the rings worked, right? So like, yeah, me neither. I, I'm like, I guess it gives them intuition or something, but it also yeah. gives them power over things. So I'm like, I don't well, know. I didn't know. I didn't. I also didn't know which rings were actually corrupted and which rings were not corrupt because okay so my my non-understanding was going to be that like oh the all of the rings have been corrupted by sauron in some way shape or form yeah but it turns out that what is more the truth is that the elven rings aren't really that corrupted at all but the dwarven rings are corrupted a little bit because and my, the way that my brother described it, and I'm sure that people in the comments have their own interpretation of this, but the way that my brother described it was that the dwarves, it's not like they have the same, because they kind of portrayed it as maybe, in the show, as maybe the um, Durin's dad, what is his name, Durin or something like that? Uh, Durin the third, and then the son is Durin the fourth. Oh, okay, so they're both Durin, okay. So Durin the third, when he says, when he says like, "Oh, what happened to my ring?" and he's like looking around for, he's almost acting like Gollum, right? Like, "Oh, wait, or, or Frodo yeah. sometimes acts." And my brother was like, "Well, technically, the way that his interpretation of Tolkien's work was is that the dwarves were affected, but they were not affected so much as becoming addicted to the ring, as they were affected more so like." Hey, I don't trust anybody else around me. Like, I'm not sure that you guys are all out for like the right things, but I know I'm out for the right things, so it's a little bit different. But then when it gets to the humans, the human rings are the most corrupted. And so that's why you see like a different kind of like when Gollum gets the ring from the humans, that's why it's so it's so corrosive. And that's why, you know, Isildur right now is like pretty cool. Like you're like, I think Isildur is gonna be like a pretty good leader, but of course he gets a ring. Yeah, and we all see goes the down. flashback from uh Elrond <laughs> yeah. later. Exactly. Lord of the Rings. Exactly right, exactly right. So I think that it's i think that i would like to learn a little bit more from the show about what their perspective on the rings actually is and what sauron's Im input into the rings is actually doing from a corruptive standpoint like like in other words are the elven rings are they corrupted at all are they fine are the yeah, they, rings it seems like the elven rings are okay at yes. least a little bit because galadriel's ring whispers but I don't right. think the High King's ring whispers. Yeah, it and I know seem there's like three. It. I don't know who has the other one. Um, who has the other one? 
I don't know. Someone in the comments yeah, will let us know who has that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if anyone does at this point, because they might, it just might be on ice for now. But or they're taking it to the uh, to the. Uh, oh, I'm gonna get this name wrong. What is it though? Eregion, Eregion, Eregion. Yeah, the, the yeah. Place where they're uh, going? Maybe the Eregion king of that place. Or Aragon? Yeah. Or, no, Eregion. So wherever, <laughs> wherever the orcs are going now. Yes, 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 yes. Same place. They're all going there, and I feel like the, the leader of like that place might be. But I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I look. I don't know how to pronounce any of these things until someone said them multiple times around me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm wondering if they're taking a ring to the leader of that because they said it's like one of the uh, it's one of the most prestigious cities that we have in the realm. So I'm wondering if like, well, maybe the, that leader gets one. I mean, I'm kind of surprised that even Galadriel got one, to be honest. Like, she doesn't seem like she's one of the top three elves in the entire elven uh, community. And she's been not listening since, <laughs> since we saw her. <laughs> since we right. met. And the funny thing is, seeing her in this in this perspective, because in Lord of the Rings, she's all, you know, she's, I get, well, because of course she's grown and she's all, you know, uh, mythical and everything now. But back here, she was hard-headed. She wasn't mm -hmm. listening, mm -hmm. you know, and she don't never listen to nobody. And that's just bullheaded because, and I mean, don't get me wrong. Her brother did die and I get that, but that, it seems like that is making her dig the second grave kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think the really interesting question that you asked that I wasn't even thinking of mm -hmm. is the ring that the i keep calling her the girl for lack of a because i don't know her name but the blonde girl yeah because i don't think they named her the they, they might yeah. have and i just didn't catch if it. they if they did it's, it was just a in passing but like was that the one ring to rule them all and that's already been crafted or was that yeah. one of the human rings that she tried on and like the human rings um are equally corrupt I don't, I don't know. That's, that's going to be a really interesting. That, so that so I guess, question. so I guess we see, I need Solar for this. I guess is Sildur at some point in time. Oh yeah. Cause he cut it off of Sauron's hand, right? Like, mm -hmm. so when, when he cut off the ring off Sauron's hand in the flashback sequence in Lord of the Rings, he then took on the one ring to rule them all. And then he kept it until Gollum had it. Yep. Okay. 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 Yeah, so that uh, could so, be that ring, dude. I mean, that's the same thing. She, what she describes they, is exactly what The reason what I think it's that ring is because they said that they use more mithril than the other ones. So uh, I was like, I was like, I wonder if that's the main ring, yeah. and that's the one he he can't make it seem like that's the one he wanted, but that's the one he wanted. For that's real. such a good point. I did not even think of that when I was watching that show. Because when they that's... said they use more uh, mithril in this, I was like. Mm. Okay. Yeah, like, okay. that's what it is. What, that's gotta what are be what doing? it is. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't know if I trust you guys. Well, at least not at least not quote Anatar. And then even um when during the fourth comes, he's like, What do you know about this Anatar? Yeah, you know? dude. So yeah. it I think it's it's probably gonna come to their realization soon because we only have three episodes left, but at the same time it's going to be way too late because those next rings are going to be made. Yeah. Those next, those rings yeah. are going to be made. And I think that's when it's going to hit the fan. And one of the, the biggest fan things I want to talk about is, um, uh, Casa Doom. Oh yeah. Because in, you know, we have during the third and he's finally, you know, he's, he's using the ring. He's starting to put it on and he finds the, um, he finds the uh the first place to start digging to get the sunlight back in yeah and even disa talks about Aule and how they sing to the rocks and how this seems like somehow cheating and i believe it's sort of in that way cheating because these rings have some type of spiritual connection that they're not telling us and you think if if someone says this ring is going to be able to give you power over things no one's questioning that no one's like <laughs> yeah well no elrond questions it um disa questions it questions it but no like in power people are questioning no one's like you know what i do like power but maybe we shouldn't mess with it this seems like we might be messing with like the nukes of our of our you know society or yeah. our world or whatever maybe we should not make these things exactly. but the 
the finding of the the uh, different points of the foundation where they was like, hey, we don't we don't dig here, and then Disa going down to get the tuning stone or orb or whatever, and hearing what I believe is the Balrog waking up. Uh, yes, yes, I then, agree. With you. And then seeing another scene where during the third is like, oh, we need to dig deeper. Why are we able to dig deeper? And they're like, uh, you told us not to dig. <laughs> right. He's like, well, forget all that. Scratch. Don't, don't worry. Just keep digging. I'm like, no, 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 no. Even <laughs> when her son said, hey, look, Disa said there's something dangerous down there, something evil. We need to leave it alone. And I think there's going to be a lot of dead people behind this ring and it made me think ah that's why you wanted the dwarves to have the rings because you knew the dwarves would lead them to waking up the balrogs to then of course enacting your plan of like i don't know earthwide chaos or whatever Mm. so at least i think but you know we don't we don't have you know we don't have anyone someone in the comments let us know but i think this is kind of it seems to be so at least from me watching it sauron's play is let me just sow seeds of evil chaos and let them play out because since i'm at the top of the evil ladder i'll be able to control it i just need evil at least more evil than good because if there's too many good men then i i can't i can't beat all that but if there's evil popping up everywhere and there's chaos going on then i'll be able to rise to power like i want to right at least I'm guessing. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> also, it was cool to see uh, the Durin's door or whatever. Um, yeah. Although he was, although whoever was talking about it was almost giving away the password. Like it's a password protected door for our friends. <laughs> I'm like, bro, <laughs> speak friend and enter. I know what this is. <laughs> like, don't get, don't, don't try and trick me here, buddy. Like this is too, this is too obvious. <laughs> He did. He did go like wait. I mean, he he really leaned into that. Yeah. Oh, he leaned into it so badly. Can you, you know, imagine like, saying that to your to your friends like movies? just giving it away? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I guess I don't mind it. People like me need that help. Look, I look, all, all I know is the movies and not you know the movies. That's it. So I mean, hey, you know, you know what? I'll let that slide. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. The, I like I like seeing I like your I like um, what you're saying about the Balrog because I also believe that that was the Balrog, but. um which we really do see a shot of the Balrog in the trailer, so we know we know it's one of them come out sometime. That's right. That's right. And we also know that um, from from the Fellowship, when they do get to that door, there's also that sea creature that's living in that big pond. So we know oh, that yeah. one of the evils that's spreading under Sauron is that there are these like evil creatures around that are that are growing in strength and power so it's kind of a cool it's kind of a cool like shout out to that to that movie so i like that a lot that was that was that was a fun you know sometimes fan service is is like just lame but that was actually pretty cool it was pretty cool to see him build the door and it's pretty cool to see the the yeah. balrog be indicated as part of the problem oh a huge part of the prop um I guess uh, another thing that I thought was awesome about this episode is seeing how Adar handled um, or is planning to handle Galadriel Mm. because, you know, at the end we see Galadriel get taken by the orcs. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, we assume we know she ain't dead because that's the only problem with the prequel. It's like, well, she'll be all right. (laughs) Right. But I mean, well, all right is relative because that doesn't mean that you know no bones or you know unconsciousness or whatever has to happen i mean doesn't have to happen so you know but when she makes it to adar and he's like we have a common enemy this reveals to us that now adar believes for sure that sauron is still alive because remember at least the last time we saw him i believe he was still on the fence of like i don't think he's still alive he's you know he's gone he's dead kind of thing Mm. um and there were some rumblings of maybe he didn't you know maybe he still made it so now it seems like he's definitely under the belief that sauron is still alive and we need to stop him Mm. and i'm not totally against this alliance how about you Mm. (laughs) Well, here's what here's what's really interesting, and I if if they address this in the show, 
that I forgot. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe you can tell me if, if I forgot it. Okay. One thing I find really interesting is that Adar is clearly like a dark elf. He's like, he's got the whole ears. He looks the part of the dark elf. Like he is leading the orcs, but he's doing so as like an, a, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how dark elves are. Like, are they former elves? Are they like <laughs> mutated elves? I don't, I don't really know. Cause again, I don't know the lore as well. Oh, uh, the, okay. I'm going to try to explain this and not screw it up. Anyone who's listening, please help me if I screw this up. <laughs> I believe the first orcs were corrupted elves okay i believe i think you're right about that i think i've heard i believe that's how it's presented yeah so he's like one of them so yeah he's he's one of them but he's you know a more seniority or whatever because he's you know he's a a top you know a top orc i guess yeah because he's one of the originals i guess and that make that makes like so that whole part of the lore is actually really intriguing right like why why did the elves i mean we can we can kind of understand why the arrogant good-looking people would be like oh you guys aren't as good looking as us and you guys um (laughs) you guys are evil so we're gonna get rid of you but like to know what the politics are of that whole situation would be really fascinating to me so no I, i don't hate this alliance either the thing that i'm not sure how they tackle though is like at what uh, who does he think that they're going against right like so in other words so are they going to a region because or whatever whatever the name of the city is are they going to that place because i don't think they're going to that place i mean is is kella brimbor there is kella brimbor and and anatar are they in a region uh where are they (laughs) dude this is why we need solar solar would know this right off the top of his head yeah, I don't know if he's in a region. I don't. I, yeah, he's he's in a in a region. I believe. Okay, okay. So that makes sense because that means that he is literally going to take on Anatar, and he believes that Anatar is Sauron, and that Sauron's up to no good. That actually makes sense because now the the whole thing of saying like we're headed to a region, but we're not actually trying to take out you guys. We're actually trying to take out somebody else, and that alliance I actually think is cool. Here's the problem, though, because it allows Galadriel to protect her people, and it allows yep. Adar to kill his, uh, his, I guess his only challenge to the throne of orcs. I guess. Yeah, like more he he runs Mordor right now, so yeah, it makes sense. Um, but the only thing that I don't quite understand is, I mean, Anatar slash Sauron does not have an army at all, so like. They're bringing in an entire army. Like they probably could have, you know, brought some special forces or something, right? Like they brought in entire armies to take this guy down. Um, so I'm kind of wondering how that's going to go. So if I think probably what's going to happen is Anatar basically has to get those rings to the humans ASAP, right? Because he's he's got to get to the, the rings to the humans as soon as possible, so that the humans who are already a mess, by the way, like we already and, talked and, uh, about the navy versus the army, and then and Farazan versus the lady queen, and the uh, Numenorians are like the best, you know, most yeah. technological men because the elves yeah. gave them, you know, things and stuff. I can't remember why Solar knows why, but they look. I don't know elves. They was real cool with them back in the day, and yep. like elves gave them stuff. Yep. So <laughs> yeah. So. The, the humans will go will go sideways real fast because they're already going sideways. Yes. And they, don't even, they don't even have any rings yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess what's happening is that Anatar has to corrupt the humans as quickly as possible. Otherwise, because he needs an army, he needs to get an army from somewhere. Um, True. I mean, he got, I guess he could take Adar's army, but Adar is all already partnering with the elves, and and at that point they are all on the same page like this guy's up to no good even if some of the rings are a little bit tainted or whatever as long as he doesn't have the ring of power he can't like my impression is is that if if sauron doesn't have the ring of power then his corruption still corrupts other people but that doesn't mean he can control them right like they still get to use their powers but he can't control them on top of that so I guess that's what the conflict is building for the end of the season. And quite frankly, I think that's kind of cool. I was not expecting Adar to partner with Galadriel and her group at all. So that's that's a cool twist. I like that. 
I'm down. I'm down. I'm down uh, to see that happen and see how that that works itself out. That would to see on screen. I believe that is an awesome and weird team up. Yes. Like okay, yes. look. For right now, I know that we are essentially mortal emery, enemies, but for right now, Sauron is the biggest problem. I know we're a big problem because we've already taken over Mordor, which was I forgot the original name because they renamed it at the end of last season. But oh, whatever they renamed the, Mordor? Uh well no, Mordor I thought it was named something else in the Southlands and they named it Mordor after the Oh the yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Blew up changed or the map or whatever. Um, but yeah, the so like hey, I know we are a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. There is a much bigger problem than us, and you don't like them either, and we don't like them. So, why don't we get together and stop that problem? And I can see Galadriel, of course, because of her hatred of Sauron, saying, like, hey, okay, for now, you know, look, we all glocks down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for, for now, and we can go after this guy, but I got my eye on you kind of thing. Yep, that makes he, sense. I mean, essentially, he's still a elf. I mean, so I guess it'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, it's, it was called the Southlands. That's that's why oh, so Sauron is called like the King of the Southlands or whatever. Ah. He, yeah, so that makes sense. Cool. Was, so, they called themselves the Southlanders, is what this says. Ah, uh, got you. So yeah, that scene. Or getting able to see, being able to see this play out, I think is going to be an awesome mm -hmm. final act of this season. Because essentially, with this with eight episodes, if you say epi eight episodes, essentially they're sort of broken into three, kind of because you know we don't have nine, so it can't be like even. But you could say essentially the first three episodes, since they dropped all three of them at once, say the first three episodes was kind of like the rising conflict mm -hmm. or like the you know the the notification and rising conflict, and then two episodes in the middle four and five would sort of be the i don't know the the i guess the mounting of forces and then three i mean six eight uh six seven and eight would be the final conflict mm -hmm. and well i guess and resolution sort of mm -hmm. so maybe six and seven is where everything goes crazy and then maybe eight is where we get some little resolution sort of before the mm -hmm. third season mm -hmm. because the way this is going I think the season three is going to be even even better than this. I agree. Yeah. The I mean, this is going, especially, you know, you got Casa Duke. Like everyone is, like you said, everyone is kind of getting into place now. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, we talked about, you and I, you and I talked about Ahsoka a lot. And one mm -hmm. of the things that was disappointing about Ahsoka was that it peaked in the middle of its season. Um, and I, and part of that was just because of the execution of the show, like just and, and the way that they chose to do it. But part of it was also because the rising conflict was really kind of like, well, you peaked your conflict in the middle of, the, of your of your season, as opposed to peaking the conflict um, near the end of your season. Um, I mean, they tried; they they were trying. It was supposed to be like Ahsoka versus um thrawn and all that but they just didn't really quite pull it off this show it seems like they're gonna pull it off and that, i think that's what's cool and, and to be honest season one did the same thing season one got a little bit better near the end when they started being more battles where all of the conflicts started coming in um, i will tell you one thing i missed from season one since we mm -hmm. haven't talked about this at all is it have we haven't even brought up this guy but i do miss the little the romance between the elf guy and the the lady um who had the son who was like doing evil stuff without knowing he was doing evil stuff. I can't remember. The, I can't remember any of their names. Yeah. Aaron Deer uh, is the elf. And yes. sadly he was not around this episode, but we, we, that's the thing with a show like this. When you have so many storylines, some people have to get put on ice. Uh, Cause I mean, honestly, even the orcs were on ice until like the last five minutes. Yeah, it's so true. Like when they showed up, I was like, hey, where y'all been? I even said that, like I said that out loud to the screen. I was like, hey, where y'all been? <laughs> We've been so traveling. We, yeah. we don't have cars, okay? It takes a while. <laughs> this is exactly Just right. check back with us at the end of the episode. We'll still be walking. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Aaron Deer is, I guess he's still roaming. Because okay, he brought um, he brought the young lady back to their uh, 
their little uh her and um Isildur back to the little village right i don't believe he's staying there i think he's right. still roaming around and beating up all of the the sauron uh devotees or whatever yes 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 like the leftover he's, he's killing all them yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. He's killing all them and like wiping them up which i'm not against i i'd even watch a show about him tracking it i mean just i mean all right guys come on amazon picture this marvel's punisher but set in middle earth aaron deer yeah. is the punisher come on come on man come on with me come on come on we got a show don't we we got a show do we have a show <laughs> oh it's an amazing show I'm, <laughs> I'm in i'm in i mean but you know what that was what i thought we were going to get with uh hawkeye the tv series hawkeye oh, i thought we were going to get yeah. him as ronin or whatever um and so i'm down for that because those storylines are really interesting where somebody can be go from being like a hero to being like well no one else is going to clean up this mess and i am really bitter so i guess it has to be me i would yeah, love to like, see that it's it's a situation where i'm not really doing anything bad i mean i'm doing something bad but i'm doing it for a good reason Yes. because no one else is stopping these people these people keep coming back i mean even if you if we were to talk about um uh the marvel netflix even luke cage when he uh when he first put Cottonmouth in jail and he was like cool he's in jail now i can leave harlem and he was out of jail within 24 hours his lawyer came and he was out so it, it's kind of like hey i try to i try to do it the right way yep y'all keep letting these people out yep Yep. So I can, you know, I can kind of understand sort of where that comes from. So that I wouldn't be against watching a show like that, or no, even like cool. a little short mini series. Like if you gave us, uh, say, three episodes between season two and three, I'd be fine with that. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, you know, I him agree. out there living on his own, hunting, tracking those people and everything. I'd be down with that. You know what I wish they'd do more of? Um, What's up? You know, like Marvel did this, just but just one time. Or no, I guess they did it twice, technically. But both times they killed it, and then they just dropped it. So, uh, Werewolf by Night, right? Uh, Look, we're going to get all of our resources together, and we're going to do a 45-minute, one-episode thing. And if people love it, we will do more. If people aren't really vibing with it, then we will just cancel it. And it doesn't need to go anywhere because it was a one shot anyway. Yeah, it's just a little short film. It's all good. Exactly. So I wish they'd do more of that because, you know, um, both they did they did the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special and they also did um, that one. And I feel like you could easily do like, okay, here's a one episode, one shot comic, if you will, of mm -hmm. Anatar. No, not Anatar. What was it? Was it uh, name again? Aaron Deer. Aaron Deer. Aaron Deer fighting off all of the Southlanders because he has to get to at least three Southlanders who are kind of the boss level strength guys um, in order to take down like their their little rebellion that they're doing. I mean, that first of all, that's a cool show. Um, second of all, if it actually goes anywhere, you can be like, okay, cool. Let's green light a series where he does a little bit more, or let's kick off another one of these to see if we can do another show. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on board for that. And I wish and they would do that without comes, spending a billion dollars. When it comes dollars. to those special features that, or the special presentation or whatever that Marvel did from, at least from what I saw, the response to werewolf by night was very positive very positive and i assumed okay cool something like this now we're going to be able to kick off sort of midnight sun stuff it doesn't yep. have to be the whole team now we can do another special feature of another person that's yep. from midnight suns and this will lead us up to blade sooner or later yep. and nothing happened <laughs> nothing happened dude and, and, and that's and that's out of time funny thing is it's one of the best reviewed things from phase four that's what i was just gonna say it's one of the <laughs> best things from phase four and like it doesn't go anywhere, <laughs> right and it goes nowhere yeah That's but yeah so like amazon follow me we could do something very short maybe two three episodes like some bbc stuff or you could do something where it's just like an hour you know i mean anime does this all the time you know just an hour and it's this little mission or whatever that we go on kind of like you said he's tracking these three people they're the most important southlander kind of rebel well no mm -hmm. uh, uh sauron people or whatever mm -hmm. and then that's it and it's like okay cool that fills in the time between season one and two 
or the time that we didn't see him after he left Isildur and that uh, the girl at the um, the the new village or whatever that they went mm-hmm, to, mm-hmm. and it'd be like, cool, it's some cool, you know, Lord of the Rings stuff. You don't have to super follow the books because you're able to say that, oh, well, this was between you know Wednesday and Sunday morning, so it was like really short. So there's no specific lore stating that this did not happen, kind of thing. Exactly. 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 So, I, you know, look, come on, come on, Amazon. Like, it's it's almost too easy. It's almost too easy. <laughs> and he's just he's just chasing down people. So there's no orcs. You don't have to do a lot of makeup. You just have to put dirt on their face and make them look dirty. That's it. Yep. <laughs> yep. Just yep. make them look dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody is taking baths, man. Is, look, there's no baths allowed. There's no like waterfalls and stuff. There's there's no soap. I mean, I, no, I'm, no there's not the soap, soap because dude. all the elves are clean. Yeah. They, they just, they're they have like Tide Pods and stuff. Everything's all good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but yeah, I think they should definitely do, or streamers should do more things like that. But with that said, I know we've covered a lot. There's a lot that we haven't covered, but I'm going to throw it to you for final thoughts of something that we may not have covered. And of course, where can we find you? And we'll, of course, keep talking Rings of Power out here, y'all. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good season. I'm, I'm glad. You know, the last like maybe three or four things that you and I have talked about have not. They have. I'm not gonna say they've been bad, but they've been disappointing they've been a in struggle. a lot. Of, yes, yeah. they've been a struggle. So this is actually really cool that this one, this show is actually on the way to improving. Yes. I like it a lot more this this season. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. So I think, um, I think that the show. Here, here's what I think. I will say a few negative things about the show, just to just to kind of, you know, agree with some some maybe agree with some other people that are out there who are complaining about it. Although I don't think this this season's getting as much hate, and it doesn't deserve it, so I'm glad. But I watch. I also watch Game of Thrones, and I only read the first two books of Game of Thrones, okay. um, and I'm watching House of the Dragon now. And the one thing I'll say about Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon is that like you don't get confused about who's who, about what their names are, about what they're doing, about what their motivations are, about wh- why they're doing what they're doing. This season has a, has improved that a lot, but like there should be no reason why I'm texting my brother every episode to see what's actually going on or like to actually gain more information about something. It should be in your show. And if your show doesn't have enough time to do that, then you need to go back to uh, Amazon and be like, hey, look, I need twice as many episodes. And just so you know, that means that you get to have twice as many seasons, which is awesome for you. Um, Because that's the one thing I'll complain about is that we go for long periods of time without seeing some characters. And then sometimes when we see those characters, it's like, wait a minute, I don't even remember what this is or or like what was going on here. And then you've got to put them through a character arc perceptively at least to me even faster because you because they're only really in two episodes three episodes of the entire season and then i'm left going like who is this person again i don't really remember this um, gotcha. i wonder how much of that is a difference in writing style between tolkien and uh martin or if it's more of the adapters that are i wonder i i think so okay mm. I'm going to say, well, okay. It may be because I haven't read The Similarillion, right? And technically, I haven't read how, The House of the Dragon book. I can't remember what that book's called. But I did read two books of um, of Game of Thrones, and I have read Lord of the Rings, and I have read The Hobbit. And I will say that in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, I don't think it's that confusing because you know kind of who the teams are and you know what the quests are that they're under. Mm -hmm. Now, Cimmerillion may be very different. I don't know. But Game of Thrones is by definition, one of the reasons why it wasn't adapted for the longest period of time was because Game of Thrones is insane. Like the number of characters is insane. Like the show is is cut out characters as well. Um, And so I just think that however... Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon are handling their characters from like a relatability. Like, remember, this is who this is. Whatever, however, they're doing that is a masterclass of how to do it. Um, and so, I I kind of hope that uh, um, Rings of Power will get a little bit better at that. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and just a little bit better at explaining. Now, look, I know that none of us writers <laughs> really want to put more exposition into their dialogue or something, right? But sometimes it could be just one little thing here. Like, like Keller Brimbor could say something like, man, I don't think the elven rings were corrupted. What's what's going on? Why are these ones corrupted? And there's a, there's a little bit of that, but it's not enough for me to to, to know like, oh, okay, cool. The elven rings we're kind of left not to corrupted. guess a lot when it comes to actually exactly. And that what, what does that mean? That means I'm texting my brother. That means we have to have solar tell us what's going on. Like your, your brain wants to fill in the space, but you don't want to fill in the space wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, that's my only, that's my one complaint for this season thus far. Um, but I like this season. I, li- I like where the characters are at. I like what the characters are doing. I like the, I like the increased tension. I like the increased conflict. I loved the Barrow White scene. I thought that like that felt sh- like first of all, it was actually scary. Which Lord of the Rings was actually scary. Um, I don't think this this show has been scary pretty much until the Barrow Whites came out. Um, the fact that they're hinting at some things that we're going to see later on, I think, is super cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, my final thoughts are I'm very pleased with where the show is going and I'm glad that I'm watching it. Um, it's not my favorite season of television because I love the gentleman on Netflix. I thought that was amazing. I thought that fallout was amazing. Um, those two shows are still at the top of my list. House of the dragon season two, wasn't quite as good as season one, in my opinion. So, but it's still great. Um, the rings of power is still below those three shows, but it's still worth it watching for me uh i'll start other shows and be like ah, i don't even know if i can get into this but this one's, <laughs> this one's good um uh, yeah and, and anyways if you if anybody wants to find me um i haven't been doing a lot of youtube videos because i um, just got a lot of stuff going on um in non-youtube land <laughs> i'm moving <laughs> i've got i've got lots of clients right now which is good um and also uh, the short film that I shot last year. I need to send that. I need to send you the short film. Um, uh, I'm a, I'm gonna remember to send it to you after uh, after I'm done recording. We're done recording this. Cool. But the short film um, has been receiving some really good feedback. We we're, it's on the film festival circuit right now, which is why I can't post it publicly. Um, but it did just get um, four finalist awards for the uh, red. Um, I guess they're called the Red Director Awards or something like that. Red Movie Awards, I think is what they're called. They're, okay, out in, cool. they're out in France. Yeah. And we got four finalist positions. We got finalist for best short, finalist for best screenplay, which of course makes me really happy because I wrote it and directed yeah. it. Um, best first time director, which is me. My co-director, Lucas, has directed stuff before, but he really handed the reins over to me on this one. So um i got i gotta get a finalist position for that and then we also got a finalist position for best trailer so that's been awesome like that was that's been really good to hear nice. um so i might be traveling to france next year if we can get it into the uh so only certain ones go into the final awards this is like the summer awards so hopefully we get into that that'd be awesome and you can find me on youtube at how stories work with jay Shear. i talk a little bit about that film and creating that film but i also break down other films on there as well and then you can also find me on we haven't done this show in a long time um but you can find the story geeks is now on the orange grove 55 channel um and you can find me over there talking about stories from time to time we're supposed to do one on the rocketeer it it's all Ooh. it was scheduled but then um one of our one of our co-presenters couldn't do it so we had to reschedule it so soon on orange grove 55 you will hear about the rocketeer and us breaking down the rocketeer so that that'll be fun all right this was up this was up um for my side final thoughts um i am enjoying where we're going i think this show is going to lead us to very high action and i like how the actors are bringing it i like how the rings are working out how the whole sauron angle is working i'm pleased with this show um now unfortunately i don't watch well maybe fortunately or unfortunately i don't watch house of the dragon um but there was there's way too much stuff for me to follow so i kind of fell out. <laughs> i did see the first two episodes i think but after that i didn't watch anymore but this one I'm 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 pleased with, especially after the stuff we've been covering. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy yeah. with the show. <laughs> um, uh, as far as what we got coming left, I know uh, shout oh shouts out to my Patreon supporters. Um, 
I'm catching up. I know I got some new gifts coming for you guys. And uh, besides that, we have Star Trek coming in mm. November. And I can't think of what else. But yeah, we got we got some good stuff coming soon. Oh, and the Cross show. I think that comes in November as well. So whenever those shows come out, I'll definitely be covering those. But um, until the next time, of course, N-E-R-D, S-O-U-L, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, podcast, all that jazz. And until the next time that you have to defend your captain in the temple, we're just saying peace. <laughs>